After the death of the Achaemenid king in 323 BC, his kingdom was torn to pieces. Seleucid and Hellenistic armies were busy with war, therefore they did not hinder the establishment of the Armenian kingdom. Armenia prospered under the rule of the Yervandunis, another family which was growing in power in the western province of Tzok had already expanded its rule over the neighboring Komagin. The rulers of this province were the descendants of the Yervanduni family. The kingdom was ruled by Sham and later his son Arsham. The Seleucid kingdom became stable and grew in power at the end of the 3rd century, such that it represented a big threat to the Yervandunis. In 201 BC, the armies of the Seleucid king Antichos III attacked under the command of the Armenian generals Artashes and Zare and entered Armenia Major and Tsok. They defeated the army of Yervan IV and prevented the Kaserkes king from ruling. The people of Armenia Major and Tsok remained under the rule of Seleucids for one decade as vassals. In 190 BC, the Seleucid army suffered heavy losses from the Romans at the Magnesia War. Artaches and Zare seized this opportunity, rebelled against Seleucid, and declared Armenia Major and Tok independent and free kingdoms. Artaches became the king of Armenia Major, thus founding the Artaxerxes dynasty, and Zare became the ruler of Tok. Artaxerxes I, 189 to 160 BC, was highly educated, intelligent, energetic, and a visionary man. His first responsibility as a ruler was the unification of the Armenian territories. He proceeded with his army to the Caspian Sea and returned Paidakaran and Kharchk to Armenia Major and in the west he united Karin, Derjan and Yekerik territories to Dumorik. He introduced very significant internal administrative reforms. He reorganized the regions and marked the borders by placing stones, some of them still exist today. There was no piece of land remaining uncultivated in Armenia during the reign of Artashes, reports Moses Khorinati. The land was harvested to its full capacity. He reorganized the administrative divisions and their governing bodies. He encouraged the crafts and trade. He also initiated the construction of a new and beautiful capital for his kingdom, which was called after his name. Artashad. The historian Plutarchus wrote that Carthaginian general Hannibal chose the location of the new capital in the Ararat Valley at the left bank of River Arax. He was staying in the palace of King Artashes, hiding from the Roman army. Artashad became one of the important international economic and cultural centers. Archaeological excavations show that Artashat was a large city and its center was built on nine elevations. They have also discovered weapon, implements, clay and glass objects, coins, and a statue of Aphrodite, Aphrodite of Artashat, which is a very good representation of late Hellenistic art. The academician Arakelian states that the city Artashad has left a great mark on the history of Armenia. The successors of Artashes were his two sons, Artavas I, 160-115 BC, and Tikran I, 115-95 BC. During this period, there was a drastic change in the political powers of the region of Near East. In the middle of the 3rd century BC, the Parthian kingdom located in the Iranian uplands gained power, seized Mesopotamia from the Seleucid rule, and came to represent a big threat to 
Armenia. After the death of his father, Tigran had to concede to the Parthians a large landmass which is known in history as the Seventy Fields to secede to his father's throne. Tigran II came to the throne in 95 BC at the age of 45 as a mature and organized leader. He was the greatest leader of Armenia's ancient past and therefore he is known as Tigran the Great. First he unified Armenia Major and Sobk, and then he took back the 70 fields from the Parthians and some other territories. The Parthian Larsakuni king conceded his title, King of Kings, to Tigran the Great and his family. In 83 BC, Tigran II captured the capital of Seleucids, Antioch, and reached the shores of the Mediterranean Sea and occupied Phoenicia and lowlands of Kilikia. As a result of 25 years of victorious conquests, Armenia became one of the most powerful kingdoms of the time. Tigran the Great created a vast kingdom with borders extending from the Mediterranean Sea to the Caspian Sea. In the 80s, Tigran the Great founded a new capital, Tigranaked, that was located at the slopes of the Armenian Tauros mountain chain. Tikranaket was surrounded by high fortress ramparts and had great palaces and buildings. The historian Epianus of Alexandria has considered it one of the great cities of the time. Tikranaket and Artashad were connected by a major road which was called the Royal Road. The Roman and Armenian forces were bound to collide since the Roman Empire wanted to expand its borders to the east. In 69 BC, Rome stormed into Armenia, occupied Tikranaket. However, in the autumn of 68, at the bank of river Aratani, the Roman army was defeated and forced to retreat. Next, Rome sent his general Pompey to Armenia. Internal feuds hindered Armenia from defending itself. The son of King of Kings Tigran the Young rebelled against his father. Tigran the Great was forced to sign a treaty at Artashat with the Roman general by which he surrendered all of his empire to the Romans except Armenia Major, which he managed to keep with its original borders intact. Starting from 64 BC until the death of Tigran the Great, 55 BC, Armenia enjoyed a period of peace. Nevertheless, Tigran the Great was one of the greatest rulers of Armenia. Moses Cholenazi wrote that Tigran was one of the most powerful and intelligent kings of Armenia and the most courageous among them. By defeating the Greeks, he expanded the borders of Armenia to the limits of the old civilizations. Armenians who were ruled by foreigners now they became the rulers and collected tax from others. During his reign, Armenian men and women enjoyed the luxuries of life such as gold, silver, precious stones and expensive clothing. After the death of Bikram the Great, his son Artava II succeeded to the throne, 55 to 34 BC. He was one of the best educated rulers of his time. During his reign, many Armenian and Greek dramas were staged in Artashad. The Greek historian Plutarchus informs us that Artavas used to write tragedies, speeches, and historical romances. The Roman general Caracas demanded Armenians' help to attack Parthia. Artavas instead signed an alliance treaty with Parthia. In 53 BC, the Parthians defeated the Roman army in the city of Haran of Mesopotamia. Caracas died and the Persian armenian army sacked the Roman cities and shared the spoils of the war. In 36 BC, the Roman general Antonio marched on the Parthians, but he was defeated. Antonio held Artavas responsible for his loss, and in 34 BC, he stormed into Armenia without any warning 
managed to capture the royal family and took them to Egypt. The royal family was presented to the mercy of Queen Cleopatra. The capturers promised to free the slaves who would honor the queen with praising speeches. Artavas refused, and as the Greek historian Dio Chrysostom wrote, the slaves were called the noble people, but for the same reason they were tortured. Artavas was thrown into jail, and a year later he was beheaded. The son of Artavas II, Artashes, was staying with the Parthians, waiting for a good opportunity to return to Armenia. As an aftermath of the Roman civil wars, Antonio died, and Artashes, by the help of the Parthians, was instated on the throne of Armenia. To satisfy his vengeance, he ordered to kill and annihilate all the Roman legions which were present in Armenia. After eradicating the Romans, Armenia declared its independence. The Romans did not tolerate this act for long. By the order of the Roman Caesar, Augustus, General Nero marched into Armenia in 20 BC and instated on the throne the second son of Artavas II, Tigran, who was educated in Rome. At the meantime, Artashes fell a victim to an act of conspiracy. After the death of Tigran III in 8 BC, ignoring Rome's intentions, his son Tigran IV ascended the throne. However, he died fighting the mountain dwellers of the north, and his sister, Iraton, resigned from her right to the throne. The year 1 BC was the demise of the Atashisian dynasty. After the collapse of the Atashisian dynasty, until the half of the first century, Roman governor generals ruled Armenia, each one on an average of four to five years. In order to fight Rome, the Armenian ministers required a strong ally. Therefore, they turned to the Parthians once again. The Parthian king, Bagash, Ashakuni's brother, Tertat, in 52 AD, with the agreement of the Armenian people, was crowned king of Armenia. Rome made several attempts to conquer Armenia, but after continuous defeats, Rome recognized Armenia as an independent state, and in 66 AD, Tertat was invited to Rome and crowned king of Armenia by Nero Caesar. The Arshakuni dynasty ruled Armenia from 66 AD to 428 AD. Armenia lived a relatively peaceful period despite the Parthian Roman Wars. The grandson of Tertat, Varash I, founded the capital of the Arshakuni dynasty, Varashapat. In 226, the Sassanid dynasty came to power in Persia. The whole 3rd century, Armenia was engaged in wars with Sassanid Persia, since the Armenian rulers, the Arshakunis, were the previous ruling family of Persia. Armenia was defeated only after the death of King Khosrov of Armenia by an act of conspiracy organized by the Sassanid king. In 297, by the help of the Roman army, the son of Khosrov, Tertat, defeated the Persian army and took back the throne. The reign of Tertat the Great is distinguished by the adoption of Christianity as a state religion in 301, by which Armenia became the first Christian country. During the reign of successive Arshakuni kings, Armenia was troubled by internal feuds and conspiracies of the ministries and externally, Armenia was struggling to maintain stability caught in the midst of the Persian-Roman Wars. Armenia chose Rome as a political ally which had severe consequences. In 363, Rome was defeated by the Persian king Shapu II and was forced to sign a peace treaty. Armenia was left alone to defend itself against the Persians. Militarily, Armenia was successful, therefore, King Shabu II resorted to a treacherous scheme and invited King Arshak II to Armenia in 
363. The Armenian king, upon his arrival to Persia, was imprisoned in Dianush Fortress. King Pap son of Ashak II was the last king who freed Armenia from Persians and declared independent kingdom. He tried to improve Armenian-Persian relations, which aggravated Caesar Vares. In 374, Pap was invited to Rome and during a dinner reception, the king was brutally murdered. In 387, Byzantium and Persia decided to divide Armenia among them. Some western regions were passed on to Byzantium, and the rest of the country with the majority of the Armenia Major became under the rule of Persians. The Arshakuni dynasty ended with the fall of King Artashir in 428. Having lost its independence, Armenia was threatened by loss of identity as well. The creation of the Armenian alphabet by Mesrop Mashtots in 405 was a fateful event in the Armenian history, as it saved the Armenian nation from annihilation during the dark